Well, firstly, um, I'm really glad to be um, back in Edinburgh. Um, I, was, uh, I, I once worked here at the, um, uh, the Fringe one year, and uh, I said they were kids, but I uh, um, came here a few years ago for a cycling conference, and um, it was lovely to meet um, with Chris Hill, who was um, one of the people who actually got us initial funding. Um, when we started. So anyway, um, so um, I, I, I just sort of come to talk a bit about cycle streets, what we've done in the past, what, what we're sort of working on now, and, and kind of where we're going. Um, and um, we, we are quite an early user of OpenStreetMap, I think, in terms of actual sort of real public services, um, and it, it's been quite a journey for us. So hopefully, I can relate some of that. So firstly, just just what we do. This, there's been very many kind mentions in the last few days, which is great. Um, so we, basically, we run a journey planner um, for for bikes. Um, uh, you plot sort of start and end routes, and it gives you um, a suggested sort of set of route solutions. And we've also got um, not only a website but um, mobile apps. Um, is that the screen still? Yeah. Um, uh, we, so, as well as the journey planner, um, we've also been working on, um, uh, we also have a photo map um, that enables you to sort of plug on the map um, problems or good practice on the cycle network. You know, so things like there needs to be some cycle parking here. Um, and uh, we've always had a kind of campaigning edge in terms of what we do. That, that we, we come from a kind of background of, as, as people who want to get more people cycling and, and campaigning on and cycling and so on. So who are we? Um, there's me on the right um, and my colleague Simon, who's um, in Cambridge, I think, today. Um, uh, we call us the word master and the root master, respectively. <laughs> um, and of course, lots of people working at helping out in various ways. Um, we've got Sean, and he's not here. Um, and of course, people map. You know, which is a really fantastic resource, and it's just incredible every time I see the map how much how much stuff has been put on. Um, so um, the journey planner um, gives you um, a, a set of route choices: the uh, fastest route for people who are very confident, um, the quietest route for people perhaps new to cycling, um, and a kind of balanced route that tries to get a bit of both. And, and in general, the balanced route tries to, to be sort of practical, sensible routes that aren't too slow or, or too busy. Um, it's UK wide, although we have actually got. Um, quite a few other countries secretly loaded. Um, uh, so if you go to some places in the north of Europe, you might find the routing works. Um, we want them to go worldwide, obviously. Uh, the, the problem is the resources, um, server costs, and so on. Um, we, uh, the engine has got had quite a lot of stuff in it. it. We're basically trying to make it think like a, a real cyclist. So as someone who's very familiar with the area, who knows all the shortcuts and all the kind of balance, you know, types of traffic and what kind of stuff. We're trying to get them, get it to think like that. So. It takes account of hills um, and all kinds of other stuff, things like surface quality and barriers, even drop curves now are taken into account and things like that. Um, you get photos on, on, on the route, so if, if people have added photos, you get the, like, the pictures of what the route's like. Um, shows the calorie equivalent, um, CO2 saving, um, and um, we've also got waypoints, so you can do A to B to C to whatever. On all of our apps, except the public website, which is not great, yeah, we still haven't done that yet, but that's going to come very soon, I think, now. So first of all, why we do it? Well, um, so we, we come from a background of, of campaigning. We want to get more people cycling more safely, more often. Um, lots of challenges, obviously, you know, people scared of traffic, um, there's confidence issues and cultural issues, you know, if you ride a bike, sometimes you seem a bit eccentric for some reason. Um, and, and what we're trying to do is to help really on that first one, the kind of fear of, well, I don't, you know, I, I kind of drive you along, and I, I know what the traffic's like, but you kind of realise when you're cycling there's actually a lot, a, a lot of other, there's a sort of secondary network almost of, of stuff that you, you don't, don't see in the car. So we, we try to help sort of find that stuff. Um, and, and as a result, routes are often quite different to, to, to car routes, obviously. Um, so, I mean, we get lots of lovely quotes like this. Um, so this is one that came on Twitter. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, well, the one below, um, I needed a route, route planning with uh, current Cambridge maps. Cambridge, I was by far the best map, I think, in Cambridge. Um, Use the Exit Planner, you know, for the first time as a non cyclist, which is, you know, really good to see. Um, need to find, help me find a quick route from my house to a new job. To, you know, very common use cases, I think. So, a bit of history. Um, this, by the way, is a picture of a sign in, from 1857 that I found again, which I thought was appropriate. So, um, we, uh, we started out, basically, by doing a route planner in the website of Cambridge Cycling Campaign. Uh, both me and Simon um, are quite, uh, both still involved in that organisation. Um, back in June 2006, so quite some time ago, um, and this was very shortly after Google had launched. Um, and so what uh, Simon did, he basically spent quite a while just drawing lines over a Google satellite image and 
tagging them. And in fact, we've actually written something that looks very similar to you know, things like um, Potlatch 2 nowadays, that effectively you could draw things on, you click on a line, you could add metadata, you could split things, that kind of stuff. Um, and during that period, which was about two or three years, we had 47,000 journeys planned, which we thought was an enormous number. Um, and we had 15,000 um, pictures like this on the map, you know, someone's just put a picture and geolocated it. Um, and then um, we presented this at a, a conference um, of, of various cycling groups, and of course everyone wanted it as well. This is, you know, can we have it in our area? Um, and also, um, Edinburgh, um, Chris Hill, who I mentioned, um, basically got a grant um, out of the Scottish Government's Sustainable Transport section um, through his company, um, Changing Pace. Um, and that enabled us to buy a proper server, a rather little freebie hosting thing, um, and set up Edinburgh Cycle Street. So Edinburgh is in fact the sort of effectively where, where Cycle Street almost has come out of it in, in many senses. Um, and that also enabled us to basically go national. So, so we set up the same thing around the UK, um, and you know, with OpenStreetMap, free data, no barrier to entry, just download it and start using it um, once you've kind of worked out how to use it. Um, and so we went UK wide um, four and a half years ago now, and we've been very busy ever since. Um, it's, it's very fair to say that we struggle to keep up. I mean, there's basically me and Simon, I, I have a full time job pretty much, and um, Simon does what he can in his spare time. And, um, Basically, running this on a very small budget and you know trying to do with large you know, expansion and so on. Um, this this was um, up to about a couple of years ago, but it's and it's way up there now. Basically, um, always expanding all the time. Um, so we, we had to find a way to kind of stand our our own two feet, as it were, in terms of funding. Um, we didn't want to be reliant on grants and handouts all the time. Um, and it became increasingly obvious that, that people were willing to pay us to do certain things, like for example, if you've got a mobile app that something to do with cycling, actually having routing within it um, you know, can be quite a useful facility and we have a routing system so we basically created a proper API sort of data interface where, where people could just create their stuff. Um, so what we, we firstly we had to set up the business, um, it's, it's not set up for the sake of being a business, it's just so that people can actually pay us money. Um, so we set up as a limited but not for profit company um, and um, effectively we're a social enterprise. Um, we're very low cost operation. Um, one year we had quite a lot of money coming in, um, and we've just about managed to pay ourselves 1.5 years of salary after but over about four years worth of work. And you know, so we're, we're not we're not really quite covering our costs, shall we say? But um, yeah, so we um, I say mo mobile was, was really quite a big thing. You know, I mean, when we started, um, you know, there wasn't much in the way of so iPhone type stuff. Android was was not there at all, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we. Um, but it was very obvious that you know you're out, you're out, you, you know where you are, you want to find your route. So we set up, um, we created an iPhone app. That's the first release. This is what it looks like now. You can see you can plan a route and you can change the type of uh, the type of route. You can add waypoints, you can sort of multiple destinations, all that kind of stuff. You can you can add photos from, from the app, um, that kind of thing. And then we uh, set up, uh, we created an Android app, which now has got a proper sat nav type thing added to it. Um, we've also recompiled that to BlackBerry 10, although given the last week's news or something, BlackBerry is kind of a pointless now anyway. Um, and we've also now got, uh, we've also got an HTML5, it was a, a kind of mobile web thing, so if you just search on a, on a mobile for Cycle Street on, on, a, uh, you know, on a search engine, you, you'll be able to get taken to this with this sort of special crosshair thing, so that you can accurately position where you want to start without your thumb being in the way of, of the actual position you're, you're doing. <laughs> Um, we also done, there's also now a Windows Phone 8 app, so we've now got basic apps on all the platforms, um, and um, uh, these are all basically done by volunteers, which is fantastic um, as open source projects. Uh, we've also got, the Windows one isn't. The Windows one isn't yet, it, it's going to be. We, there's a, a deal we've got with the person who did it, who obviously isn't in, uh, didn't get paid up front or anything like that. Um, and we've also made quite a lot of effort to get the routing into other into other third-party apps. Um, so the official Barclays Bikes app in London uses it. Um, City Mapper, which is a fantastic multimodal journey planner for London and New York, uses it. Um, Bike Hub, which is an industry sat nav um, that uses it. Uh, quite a few others in London, and so on. So, for example, this is the Bike Hub app. Um, you can see it's a kind of proper sat nav thing. Um, so this is all their interface. It's all their app. They just use our data interface, um, and they've got lovely things like points of interest and kind of nearest, you know, cash machines or bike shops or, or whatever. 
Um, City Map USA is another one. Um, we've, we've just added to the New York, and uh, we've got some work to do to stream that. But um, again, that, that comes from, from, from us. Um, Barclays Bikes mentioned, um, they, they're quite nicely called the different route types, I think steady or something like that for balance, which is quite a nice, nice, nice description actually, I think. Um, and, and we also realised, of course, that local authorities um, want to promote cycling, and uh, thankfully. Um, this, is a, this is a picture of the uh, Cambridge mayor about to come on a bike ride that my colleague Simon organised, with his big mayoral chain. Um, so yeah, local authorities. Um, basically, we've, uh, we've We've created a thing where we can skin the, the, the website in, in their style. So you can see this is a sort of demo site for place for the city council, like all that. Um, because it's the standard journey plan, but with their kind of look and feel, um, and with the photo map switched off, because local authorities don't really want to random user generated photos appearing. Um, and the sort of customizations that we had. So we, um, we did one for the site in Scotland. Um, and uh, we also created with them a, 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 for them a community mapping guide that can't just be used. Um, never actually got printed it, it's just an online thing. So, but basically this is about how people can just go out and do mapping, um, collecting stuff that actually directly benefits um, cycle routing particularly. And that's where we're on the website at the uh, that address. Um, we've done one for Please Cycle, for example, which is a kind of, um, it's like a social enterprise that, that sort of, uh, where, where a, a company can um, say to its employees, you know, we're, who, who can cycle the most in, in a month, that kind of thing. Uh, we've done a couple of local authorities like West Sussex, um, and, and all this sort of supporting income. Um, we've also done various bits and bobs for, for um, uh, various campaign groups. So, for example, we got a two page thing um, in the London Cycling Campaign uh, magazine, which goes out to its 10,000 members about OpenStreetMap. Um, and how their, you know, how cyclists can actually get involved. And we've done lots of other sort of embedded journey planners for, for, for various people, as you can see, and we, there's more, more on the way, actually. Um, so one, one thing that's been quite in, interesting in, our, in the development of cycle streets has been competition, and uh, for quite a while, the, the UK, the English, the British government have been competing with us. Um, they basically set up this, uh, they wanted to add um, cycle routing to their transport direct system, which, which they set up originally in 2003, which was a, at the time, really leading edge um, multimodal journey, journey thing. So, you know, it was the idea that I'm, I'm in my house in Cambridge, I want to go to Soho in London or something like that. Tell me all the ways I can get there. Oh, well, you can take the bus to the station and go take a train and so on, you can drive, blah, blah, blah. And they also have cycling, which is a good thing. Um, and they did this at a cost of two and a half million pounds, um, surveying, paying surveying to, to do it, um, paying surveyors. Um, and um, as of January 2011, they spent that much and had basically not that many journeys plans. And I think it worked out that it would be cheaper for everyone to take a taxi uh, for 26 pounds a journey. Um, meanwhile, we've been creating cycle streets. We'd spent uh, 28,000 pounds, cobbled from bits of grants and little bits of income here and there. And we'd had almost half a million planned. Um, and of course, it had been going from strength to strength. And um, I think this, was, this has been quite a good case of, of kind of a government IT project and how open data is really a much better way of doing things. Um, that said, we've, we, I mean, the situation has now moved right on. Um, they've actually now, as a result of working with us, and that's um, some pressure, um, uh, to open up the data that they collected. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so in fact, uh, so it's a little. Quick slide, and we were on Data Web UK as, as the main feature for, for quite a few months when they launched, which was quite nice. I'll own that. Um, but yeah, we, we've got a much more good relationship now um, with them. Um, and one of the things that we um, worked with them is um, they, they opened up the data that they've collected, um, but keen to see that go into OpenStreetMap. Um, and so, we, um, through the funds that we got, we, we engaged Andy Allen, who created OpenCycleMap, um, to create this sort of emerging source. So, you can see on the left, You've got the kind of existing OSM um, data of a particular line. And on the right, you've got the data that the, the, the DFT had collected. Um, and it's things like cycle lane width, surface quality, whether it's lit, all this sort of stuff. Really, really good data. Um, and so there's been a gradual process of trying to get people to, to merge that in. Um, and if you are living in England, it'd be great to, to, to get involved in that. So that's a slightly better picture there. You can see there, it's, so it's a, a cycle lane, but we know what the width and um, but it's part of the LCM, it's lit, it's not lit, and uh, so it's quality. 
So the, 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 the same project the idea is that people shop, that people go actually look look at the area and then decide to move the data, or, or is it really just yes? The, the idea is really that because OpenStreetMap, I think quite rightly, doesn't want automated imports of just shoving other people's data in because it clashes with existing stuff. The idea is that you can effectively say. Um, you, you can conflate the two, but actually look at it manually. So, yeah, that's correct, tick, 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 done. Um, and so you can put the things that you're happy with, and, you know, there's a little bit about inaccuracy, and, you know, but in general, the, the data effect is really good quality. Um, yes, here's another way we've been trying to get um, Cycle Street stuff out to other people. Um, we've, uh, there are various transport consultancies that create multimodal journey planning. This is um, Steve Davis Glee, who we've been working with now for a year. Um, that they've, they've been very successful in getting uh, different local authorities um, to produce multimodal journey planning, and we provide the cycling element for that. And as you can see, it's, it's our route stuff into their interface. Travel line Wales is another one, and there's uh, a slightly more local uh, uh, one coming to Scotland soon. Um, Nothing we've also done is um, leisure routing. The idea that I'm, I've arrived at a station or somewhere, I've got two hours free, give me a circular route that takes two hours. Um, and so this is the bike the back, you can see that it's actually taking you on the NCN and, and through, through other areas. Um, and that's something we're, we're hoping to get onto the main website, uh, which we've just still not got around to doing yet. Um, we've also done, started to do stuff in other countries, and some guys in Prague were keen to our cycle routing, and we've, um, we've provided a, a web interface for them for that. Um, and we did quite some tuning to, to get the route to be exactly suitable for their area. Um, because they have things like a lot of cobbles, which make a big difference to where you cycle. In general, my view is that, that um, the idea of a single set of weightings for the world just the work doesn't work. If, if you applied our routing to the Netherlands, you'd get completely stupid results, because we're very sceptical about the quality of cycling infrastructure in the UK, whereas in the Netherlands, parts are extremely good quality. You know, Prague needs different things, so um, that, that's something we're, we're very conscious of as, as we, we try to, to go more international. And we've also got some money from doing um, photo map sites, so we, we've got this idea that you can mark problems on the map. And uh, we always, we thought, well actually, you, this is actually useful information for local authorities, because the public is saying this is what we want, and actually rather than local authorities have to go out and ask them, so, you know, in surveys and so on, you know, where would you like cycle parking, well, we've got the data already. But we, um, with, with Cambridge County Council, for example, we set up this um, site and sorted um, site, that was their name, by the way, um, where effectively you can, it says, um, you know, suggest the location of cycle parking or an obstruction or something like that. Is it, yeah, that, that obstruction, that's the one my test goes on New Market Road. So. Oh, well, that's what's it, you obviously know, yes. Still there. It is still there, yes. It's because it's local, it's, it's, it's owned by Tesco, and Tesco are not interested in helping cycling. Um, <laughs> I'm a bride. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. thieves. Um, we also did a very similar site for, for London cycling campaign, and um, the idea is that they can then pass the boroughs can pass stuff on to, um, to, to get cycle parking added. Um, we've also set up a, a, a POI um, data interface uh, that pulls stuff out to the stream app, so you can, uh, which we've added to various apps, so you can find, you know, near, show the nearest cycle parking or bike shops, that kind of thing. Um, so we've done a lot of work to make a, a reasonably flexible platform that we can. Um, Commercialise is probably the wrong word, but, but to get income and to, to get it used by other people rather than just everything being on our own site. Um, and, and that's going to continue, and, but we have got a lot of work to modernise quite a lot of stuff, I think. So I'll just give you a quick sort of bit of tech stuff, because I know we've got a, a, a bit of a mix of people here. Um, so putting things together. Um, um, I just thought it would be interesting to say a bit how a routing engine works, because um, it's actually quite a fundamentally simple idea, but, but a lot of people, you know, think it's completely foodie. Um, so what we've got here is we've got, um, we've got five sort of points on a map, you know, if you imagine roads, road junctions, or something like that, and we've got the roads going between them. And our user coming along to our website said, well, I want to go from that point there, from, you know, this, this junction to this one here. And fundamentally what a routing engine does is it basically scores each of those, each of the streets, um, according to whatever however you want to weight it. So for example, for us, things like if it's a quiet street that's nice and direct, that, that's really good for cycling. If it's a really nasty road that you just don't want to cycle on, you know, that, that's, that's got a, a, a much bigger score, you know, there's a lot of friction to get through that. So in this case, you see we've got, uh, so from a point one to two, it's got a score of four, um, sorry, yeah, A, so B has got a score of five, um, 
ideas got to work through and so on. And, and what a routing engine will do is, is kind of get from one point to another and eliminate possibilities. So you can see here, if, we, um, if we're going to move on to four, we've got two options. We can either go from A and D, so one, two, three, and we have scores, that's four and three, which is seven. So there's a kind of friction to get there of seven. But if we want to go, there's another possibility, there's B, and that's got a score of five. So five being lower friction, but it's sort of quicker to get there, we can now eliminate A and D. So now we're left with just this, this rectangle. Um, and then we'll do the same to, to get to this to the finish. So we've got five and three, that's eight, or we've got four and three, seven. So actually the solution here is one, it, it's that one there, that one there. And that, that's fundamentally how a routing engine works. But, but the, 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 the difficult stuff is actually how you come up with these numbers, um, the, the sort of red numbers, to actually work out what the scorings are. Um, because, I mean, you could, well, for a start, you start with distance, because if something's very long, it obviously takes a lot long to go, you know, nice little short road. But there's lots of other things, things like hills, if it's cobbled, you know, it's going to take a long time to get there. The type of road, is it nice or nasty to cycle on? Lots and lots of different factors, and that's, that's kind of what we, we as cycle streets try to do, to actually work out how to score that. Um, so we have a kind of whole scoring table where we allocate different um, scorings, um, and delays and whether you can actually cycle on it. Um, and things like, um, if you've got say, a one-way street, we do, for example, it will actually allow you to go down the wrong, one-way street the wrong way, but it will say you have to walk. So actually a street can have two different statuses. It can have a cyclable status or a walking status. Because um, often, for example, if you can't do a right turn on a main road, for example, on a, on a street, you actually have the option sometimes to walk across. And that, that, that would be quicker. So there's, there's lots of kind of details you're not taking in. Um, so we adjust for hills, surface quality, the width of the cycle lane we take into account. If it's less than 1.2 metres, it's considered fairly useless or harmful. If it's more, then it's probably a bit better. Barriers, obstructions, um, drop curves, lighting. Uh, we've now got turn delays into the engine. So the, as you come to a junction, if you're turning left into a, a residential road, you just lose a bit of momentum. If you're turning right over onto a busy road, you've got to wait for traffic coming the other way, things like that. Um, but there's a lot of tuning we need to do to the turn of those. So basically, we take all of that, and what we end up with is we end up with this, this similar sort of graph thing, but with different the scores on. And so, if someone comes to the site, they say I want to go from here to here, and, and it, it finds that, and then it does the same thing several times over. So it finds the quietest, the balance, and the fastest route. And each of those three different types of routes have got a different set of scores effectively. And that's that's basically how it works. Um, we, um, we use a system called Cello, um, which to compress the network. Um, since, we, I mean, we, we put this in about four years ago, um, and I know since then there's been things like contraction hierarchies, if anyone's done any routing stuff, um, which is a more, which is a, a very, very efficient way of uh, reducing the size of your data set and making it fast. Um, we, as far as I can see, we actually use a very, very similar thing to the contraction hierarchies, um, but we kind of did it in a kind of non-academically formalized way um, before that, but th this is the classic example. So um, here we've got a little park, and uh, there's, there's three, there's three sort of gates into the park. So we've got here, here, and the top. Now, if, if we were doing a longer distance route that starts from where I'm standing here all the way through, maybe up to there, that might jump, it might possibly go through the park. All we care about at the point that we're actually working out the long distance route is what is the score, what is the sort of time, if you like, that score from from there to there, or there to there, or there. We don't need to know about all the sort of little mini miniature ways through that park, we, we, can ju we just need to know the overall score. So what we do is, it's like we showed earlier, where we kind of just get rid of all of that, and we, we sort of, we, we take away that detail, and we just work out the overall score. So you can see here, uh, if we're going to say from C to A, we've got either a score of 9, or a score of 10 plus 4, so actually the score is 9. So we, we just throw away the 10 plus 4, and we just say, well that's, that's the score. And if it, um, so we end up with this very simplified network, that, that has much less data, but, and that makes it much quicker to, to plan a route. Um, and so the idea really is that um, if, if it just so happens that when we've actually got the overall route, that it does actually go through the park, just at that final stage, we can just substitute in the actual real details, and that, that tries to keep the, the routing a lot faster. <coughs> um, we've got a, a, behind the scenes, we've got a, a sort of data interrogation view. Um, so here's, um, let me just switch this off. So, so here's the um, here's, here's open street map uh, just near where we are, and uh, we've got this this thing where we can use to debug things. So you see, I can kind of 
highlight bits and it tells me all the information about um, about the route. You know, what, what's, you can see the tags that have come through from OpenStreetMap, some of the assumptions that we kind of pile on top of it. Um, we can look at the nodes. And we have this thing called a snooker ball colour view. Can you see there that we've got, um, you've got th these little blobs at each of the junctions? And um, they basically have the value, the, the colour is basically what it would be on the snooker ball, the, the, the number of points you get on the snooker ball. So, um, <laughs> So, on table. so, for example, red, if you think about red, it's got one it's, it, you know, on, on a snooker table. Um, and so there's only one line coming off it. Um, but uh, green would be three, is that right? So you can see there we've got um, this one, two, three. Um, and blue, because it's four, because you've one, two, three, four. And what it means is we can very quickly spot things like if there are two reds right next to each other, um, in other words, uh, uh, some sort of error in the data where people have connected the, the data together. Two reds would be two, two lines coming off it. So, um, we've also got a um, uh, we've got a sort of data layer that shows us the actual underlying representation. Um, so, when I was saying about just a few minutes ago about the, kind of the way you compress the network, um, this is the actual network that, that's planned on. And if you were to zoom in, for example, to um, a uh, oops, sorry, see the waypoints will go in the yeah, main line. So you can see here we've got this, this housing estate here or, or something like that and there's a lots and lots of little bits, little paths being all over the place. And we don't really care about those paths at the point that we're trying to find an overall route. So what we've actually got, if I just switch this bit here, it's taken away a lot of the complexity and so we've got a lot less data basically. Anyway, moving on from the technical stuff. Um, open sourcing, we, we're desperately trying to get the code open source. Um, it, it, we, we started with it in 2006, um, and I have to say, it was never written with open sourcing in mind. So things like there are lots and lots of injudicious comments, um, there, are, um, there was, there's had to be a security review, um, the entire way we rolled out the system, all the scripting is, has all had to be completely rewritten because there were things like embedded passwords in there, you name it, absolutely massive stuff. Um, we are really just, just about there now, um, at long last, um, and it's only because I've been working six day weeks recently that the, the final thing hasn't been published. All of the apps are open already, um, the scripting is now open, Cyclescape, which is a lot of projects, um, so, but uh, that, that will be there imminently. So, um, challenges, just to sort of round off. Um, uh, yes, this is uh, a wonderful picture um, of uh, the typical challenge that uh, cyclists in the UK face. You can see there's um, lots of giveaways all the time and completely impractical instruments. Um, competition, obviously, Google has just walk, walked into our territory. Um, their data doesn't seem to be quite as good, and I think their engine seems to be quite US tuned. Um, but clearly, you know, Google, but, but I think you know, having cycle routing in Google's stuff is good because you know, it's something that um, is an you know, people will see it as, oh, I hadn't thought about taking a bike. There's obviously lots of OpenStreetMap based stuff that's starting to appear, um, and I mentioned earlier the UK government. Um, so, um, I think. What, what we've identified is that we are more than a routing engine. We, we, we're, you know, the routing engine is a technical thing. You, know, you, you can get them off the shelf now, as um, other speakers have mentioned. But what we're trying to do is build sort of an ecosystem of, of, of products and services and stuff that, that get used by other people. Um, we also have a detailed knowledge of how scientists really behave. Um, and and we, we're starting to add lots and lots of things. My, my classic example is that um, if you're coming down a hill and there's a, a traffic light in the middle, the effect of that traffic light is much, much greater than a normal traffic light on a flat plane because you lose masses of momentum. And it's really, really annoying um, compared to just cycling along and you get the traffic lights um, on the street. So, you know, that's it's the kind of thing I think that you know, a normal routing engine will just give you very simple weightings. We, we've really got to get that level in. Um, so the challenge I think we're, really, um, we're, we're about to start some big um, effort to modernise the interface. Um, there's lots of stuff that we've built, things like the leisure routing, the waypoints, um, the fact that we haven't got a full screen. We, we, there's lots of stuff that we've caught behind the scenes and it's all just a bit hidden away and it's, um, you know, things like the, um, we've got this wonderful collision data viewer and it, you can't find it. And we want to just bring it all into a nice modern interface. Um, Funding is a big issue. We are thinking about an actual investment to actually just get the stuff done quickly and then get people to pay us after the wrong way around. Um, code base, another challenge. Um, it's quite large, it's quite aging. There's, there's 150 PHP classes, it's, it's big. Um, a lot of it's in good position, but um, 
challenge from people from a close to an open project about how we get people involved, um, how we deal with competition aspects and so on. Um, it's like planning is less niche, you know, there's, there's other stuff happening now. When we started, no one was doing it at all, and um, you know, we're, we're not the only people now. And going global, how, how, we, how we get the site to be working nationally. Um, if I've just got two minutes, I just want to just talk about the second project we've been running, because um, um, we'll cite this here. Um, basically, um, we, um, the idea of this project is to get cycle campaign groups, so people who actually you know, put pressure on local authorities to, to improve cycling around the country, to provide them with a, a better way to, to work. Um, this is a picture from Cambridge. Um, you can see it's a horrible, horrible junction um, where people are sort of squeezed through, um, you know, no one wants to cycle in that. Um, this is a picture from the Netherlands, very, very common. You can see a um, nice wide cycle path, very visible. There's a bit of segregation. You know, normal bikes, happy people, everyone can do it. Um, on the left, you know, you've probably got people who are a bit more like orientated or something like that. But very, very, you know, UK people want to cycle companies, want to get from this situation to this situation. And so there's a lot of work that people do to, to pressure councils to approve um, the situation for cycling. And this is why we set up photo map. The idea that, you know, you can say, here is a problem. You know, here is a place where vehicles often park in a cycle lane. Enforcement needed, maybe the cycle lanes are graded so we don't, the problem goes away. The problem we always have with this is that it's a bit of a sink for problems. You bung it on the map and then nothing happens. You know, it's just a picture there. It's your responsibility then to send it to local authority. Um, there's no discussion interface, nothing there. Um, and cycle campaigns, what, um, they are very typical of any kind of voluntary group in this country in that they don't have much time. You know, because we're all volunteers, um, and things like knowledge is lacking. You know, if you're a local authority, you know, in the, you know ins and outs of all the regulations and everything. If you're a cycle company, you kind of think, oh, it's probably easy to put a cycle lane. But then the local authority will say, hang on, there's, there's a big trench underneath that we've got to do, very expensive to move, it's not that simple, or, you know, there'd be a lot of rejections from the car parking, all that kind of stuff. So there's this kind of imbalance between the, the knowledge and, and things like time. <clears throat> so, typical problems of campaigning. Um, Lots of things going, lots of problems, and um, can't prioritise them very well. Email lists are a fundamentally broken technology. I guess I don't need to say that to people on the OpenStreetMap list sometimes. Um, there's no archive of discussions. You know, people are talking about let's improve a cycle lane. Um, it's probably been discussed before. Um, it's very hard to match people up. You know, if, if I live, if I live in a particular area where where I think, uh, also some, I know some people live around there who, could, who would be interested in improving a particular bit of cycling infrastructure, they would be good people to get involved in, in a campaign. Um, Prioritisation, etc, etc, and people miss planning applications which have a huge effect on, um, on new, new cycling infrastructure, etc, etc. Generally, high barriers to involvement, and as a result, you know, voluntary groups struggle. Um, so, what we set up is Cyclescape, which is a, a large new website, um, on the same scale as the Jenny Plan, really. Um, and the idea is that you, you can basically sort of draw out the areas of the city you're interested in. So, here's a place where um, someone might live, and here's where they work. And the idea being that if, if there's a problem in, that, in either of those areas, they want to be told about it, so they can actually get it, you know, because they've got a direct stake, because they live there or they work there, in, in improving that area. So, um, so you've added your areas, and bang, along comes someone else has, has added an issue. They said, well, this right turn is banned. It's a problem I've reported. And suddenly, all the people who are watching that area are now subscribed to a discussion, uh, which can be done by email or, or on the website. Um, so there's a nice drawing interface and so on. Um, but, uh, so we've, we've come up with Cyberscape, and um, uh, lots of features designed for groups. So you see every issue's got a, a page, it's got um, a set of discussions that are archived that properly categorise groups with it. Um, you can see kind of all the issues and there's a map of each. Um, you can set deadlines and all sorts of other, you can reply, you know, photos, links and attachments and set a deadline, you know, so there's a council meeting coming up. Um, we've integrated the UK collision data, so you can see, you know, if there's big problems at junctions, it's there. Um, and we've also just about to add, oh yes, there's the collision data stuff. Um, we've just talked about planning applications. So um, basically, here's a list of the latest planning applications in the area that I'm subscribed to. And I can click on a button called Convert to an Issue. 
and it basically fills it all in, and it's like any other issue. And the idea there is that cycle companions will know straight away that there's, there's a big, you know, some particular change to the road environment. Um, Cyclescape, um, it's been quite a big project. We've got a, a, a survey plan for it, um, which for geolation it's called. Um, but there's quite a lot of work that we're doing to finish it off. And if anyone knows whether we get £15,000 of graph, I think that would be very, very useful because there's a good demand to, to sort of that. But you can read more about this project um, on, on our blog. Um, but we, we're spending more and more time on, on sorting this out. So, um, thank you very much. So, a bit of whirlwind talk, but thank you.